repetition. And I have to tell you something of the background and uh, what I think we can do this afternoon because talk is cheap but making a movement that takes a little more activity than that. Um, first of all I want to say that we decided that we were going to have an international petition because as women we are, have an international network which is not only in, in so-called industrial countries of the West but also non-industrial countries and two strikingly are India and Peru and until recently we also had a base in Guyana and we have very good relationships with women in Haiti and in Venezuela and in other countries as well but as an ongoing mutually accountable network we have um, Ireland, India, Peru, the US and the UK and that means that those of us in the industrial countries have been making demands on our governments for money or resources or rights, they're all the same really because it's more for more power for us, but it doesn't necessarily mean that those of us who are from non-industrial countries were going to benefit from that mm -hmm. and we felt that, that there was something wrong with the way that we had been operating. We weren't complaining about the past. We were re-seeing, re-organizing <coughs> our view of the future, the present and the future. And so we thought that we had not until then organized a petition to get money from governments in non-industrial countries because the governments didn't have much and we knew that our governments had much. And we thought that they don't have much but they get money which they take for themselves or for the military in the form of aid or loans and that we as women had a right to demand that that money which came to that country, no matter how poor, that it was oriented to the work that we were doing, which in fact was the central work in the society. That case we had been making for over 40 years, first as the Wages for Housework campaign and then as the Global Women's Strike. What we do makes society. There isn't any society without it. <coughs> What we do makes society and therefore all of us have a right to claim the wealth of the society for us and for those we care for. Wow. Betty Ann has joined us somewhere. Okay. Hi Betty Ann, we're moving on. We're right in the middle of the oh, house. Right now, I'm going to tell you about it later, I'm fine. Okay, we okay. can okay. yeah, keep, right. keep going. Okay. So. Okay. I'm looking um, forward to seeing you. So the petition was going to be international, making the case for women internationally to have the rights and resources which have to do with the work that we do which is central to the society. And that was, I think, a breakthrough. It wasn't international because we like international things. It was international because we belong together because we have the same um, rights to uh, the wealth of the society and we suffered the same deprivation and punishment and punishment as carers because the people who are in charge of the society don't care mm -hmm. at all and they don't care for the people we care for so our work is irrelevant to them and that is reflected in the way that we are treated. And that is international. And we need each other precisely to make that case in the most powerful possible way. Nina constructed the petition. I worked with her on it, but it really was her work that pulled it together 
that had meeting after meeting with different people in order to construct the petition. Uh -huh. I want to make Betty Ann, let, just let Selma point. finish. Let Selma Over finish there. the presentation because there's a lot of people on the calls and at the okay. in the room. Right. There yeah. are just so well, I'll, I'll maybe, you and I'll, I'll, maybe you can go on mute in the meantime. There yeah. are just two points that I want to make about it. Well, maybe three. The first is. What was the first? I can't. Um, Yes. The first is that we, many of us, have been involved in all kinds of movements for rights and against violence. The anti-rape movement has been a major, um, a major thrust of women internationally. And only now are we beginning to hear, in fact, that the anti-rape movement in the south of the United States ultimately gave birth to the Montgomery bus boycott, which, uh, which, um, in, come, which pushed uh, Martin Luther King into fame. But it was the women who had been organizing against rape that was the source of that. And we will find that in a number of ways. And it's not a, the anti-racist movement has demand, been demanding these rights and that's right. The anti-imprisonment uh, movement has been demanding that the brutality that goes on in prisons has to stop and that black people and people of color generally cannot be pushed into these, into solitary confinement and in other ways imprisoned in the society, destroying families and communities. But we haven't always said we not only want an end to this persecution and that violence, but we also want the money that will prevent it from happening again. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what we have to change. Uh, and it is absolutely crucial that this that the thrust of the movement against capitalism and for the rights and, um, and help and resources that we have dem been demanding, each of us, each of our communities, each of our groups in one way or another, that all of this also be a demand for money. And the place to begin is wherever you are. There isn't one place. And I'm so happy that I'm sitting next to a woman from the $15 an hour campaign who told me just a few minutes ago what is the absolutely crucial information that when they go to demand $15 an hour, women say, I'm a full-time housewife, what's in it for me? And when we go out and say we only we want you know wage for housework, we have to explain, sorry, we have to explain that we want a wage for housework so that women can refuse the lowest levels of wages and say, take your job and shove it mm -hmm. because I have an income for other work that I am already doing. That mm -hmm. is the connection that we have always made because we realize that the great division among us Whatever other division there is, is between those of us who have wages and those of us who don't. Okay? And mostly it's women who don't have the wages, and mostly it's men who do. Now, I'm not saying those wages are living wages, and I'm not saying that's the most wonderful world to live in, is to be in waged work. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that the difference between nothing and one is a very big difference and a very big division among us which we seek to eliminate by all of us having one and a lot more, one plus. Okay, so that's, that's, that's where the petition comes from, okay, and what we want to do at this meeting 
and that meetings like this, a few meetings, not too many like this that we're having in the U.S. this time, is precisely to see how this petition can be useful precisely in the struggles for rights and resources and against violence, against women, prisoners, etc. You know, how it can be a weapon to build every aspect, every corner of the movement, because we're all in the same movement. The question is where we are in that yeah. movement and how we in different corners of the movement can work together. And so when you all introduced yourselves when we came in, I was kind of delighted because there's the living wage camp, the $15 an hour campaign. There's someone who's an activist in Washington, D.C. There are people in the global women's strike in, um, in, in Philadelphia. There's a, an unwaged, fundamentally unwaged farmer who has a lot to tell us because a lot of people make their living off the land. There's a single, a number of single mothers. There's the Dallas Six campaign. There's the struggle of women in, here in Philadelphia and New York and in other places too, to prevent children from being snatched from their parents, mainly from their mothers, because they're sexist and racist and make money out of taking, kidnapping our children. Yeah. And there's this great struggle that's about, that we are meeting all in one place. That is a triumph. That is a victory in and of itself, which we must make work for us this afternoon. Okay, and now I thought that Nina should start to speak about the content of the petition and <coughs> perhaps begin to open up ways where we can all use it. Before Nina does, there was some concern that we've lost CWAP. Is CWAP still on the call? Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, Nina. Okay, well, I'm particularly delighted to be here because I, I don't know many, a number of you, and I've heard about you, and it makes a big difference to put a From me, to she's heard name. about you from me. <laughs> that's right, that's right. She comes back and tells you a lot of stories and all these uh -uh. wonderful people that she's been working it's with. It's true. <laughs> so it's really nice to put a face to a name. Okay, Selma gave some of the history about the petition. I think you should know in addition to that, that we, we had a petition in the UK for about a year, which was quite similar to this one. Mm -hmm. It was a living wage for mother, uh, what was it? I can't even remember the a name of it. A living wage? No, not it was, a living well, wage. Well, it was, it was Pay, a living a, a wage. A wage? Payment? I can't remember, but it, well, it was about a living wage, but the title of it was different. But the interesting thing was that while we had it in the UK on that, you here in the US had a petition on welfare because there were two, uh, two pieces of legislation that had been presented here by some Congress people, a woman, a black woman from, where is she? Where, where, that's it, from where, where welfare warriors are, uh, which was uh, really really giving welfare mothers some rights to that money and reversing some of the terrible uh, terrible things that have happened with welfare legislation in this country. And another one that also recognized that caring is work. So we felt you were in a, in a much better position here because you actually had two pieces of legislation that you could be pushing forward. Well, we in the UK were kind of making a general appeal without having a piece of legislation. But what then happened is that as soon as we started going on about a living wage, everybody who was on the calls when we were discussing the petition said, oh yeah, but we would really like to campaign for a living wage as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it became quite clear that a living wage was really the international demand that resonated with where the movement is at, you know, not only in the UK, yeah. but here in the US. And when we raised it with our sisters in India, in Peru and in Ireland, mm -hmm. they had the same, absolutely same reaction. 
I like to add to that that the women in India are rural women on the land as well as domestic workers. Mm -hmm. And the group in Peru is a trade union of domestic workers, uh, which has been part of the Global Women's Strike Network for a number of years. And, and they were very delighted to kind of look at the whole issue of domestic work. Mm -hmm. Not only from the point of view of domestic workers, but to also think, you know, the housewives also are doing the work that we're doing. And also ourselves, if we were paid for our work raising our own children, we wouldn't necessarily have to work as domestic workers raising somebody else's kids and mm -hmm. cleaning up somebody else's household. So they were very glad to do that. We also, uh, in looking at the petition, because what, you know, the petition we had before had a whole, it, 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 because it came from our general campaigning of investing, caring, not killing, and claiming the money from the military, it also kind of, in a way, asked that people take a position against money going into the military. And some of the groups that we came into contact with in Britain, there's a group in particular called Mothers at Home Matter, mm -hmm. who are basically a middle class white group with a number of people from the US actually, mm -hmm. who turn out to be army wives, okay, who are posted in various countries, etc and who feel that they're very discriminated against as mothers who want to stay at home and raise their kids. Because it's true that all the legislation that has come in, not only the go successive governments have called women who stay at home workless, which is already a complete insult, you know, if you're raising your kids you know how hard you're working. But in addition to that, all the legislation that has come in to do with taxes has really been an incentive to women going out to work. So if both parents are going out to work, they get various tax cuts. Mm. When, well, when there's only one parent going out to work, they don't, you don't get the tax cuts. So the whole mother at home, which used to be prioritized before, you know, as the family unit and all of that, now it's quite the opposite. They really want mothers out there. They don't really care what happens to the kids. And they just want you to be, you know, paying taxes, being so-called productive, and they're mm -hmm. measuring women's equality as how many women are out there, you know, being exploited outside the home, really, is how it's being measured. So, groups like that are obviously people who are not going to be... Oh, and the other group that was also important, there's a group in Scotland called Scottish Kinship Care Alliance, and it's a group of basically grandmothers, mainly grandmothers, who are taking care of their grandchildren because maybe the mother was, you know, somebody who had drug problems or other health issues and so they couldn't look after the kids and the grandmothers have taken over the children in order to prevent them being going into care. But then they are really impoverished as a result. Some of them have had to give up employment. And if you are a foster parent, you get a whole bunch of money Mm -hmm. Support from the state. If you're a kinship mm. carer, that is a relative, then you hardly get anything. Most people get nothing and some people get a bit. And they formed an alliance of all kinds of different groups that were very keen to be getting uh, the same recognition that you get as foster parents. And when they met us, we said, yes, but what you're what you suffering from as grandmothers is the fact that mothers are not recognized when we do the work. And so when it's a grandmother, it's by extension, you don't get any recognition either. And they were also keen to become involved with the Global Women's Strike and, you know, support what we were doing. So all these considerations went into the petition and we did decide that, for example, there was no reason why somebody had to take a position in relation to the military in order to support a living wage for mothers and other carers. And that we wanted to, you know, the points in the petition to really address the issue of what the work is and why we should get money for it and, and how it reflects, you know, how it's worked for the whole of society that, that we're doing as mothers and other carers. And that the different sectors could also use a set of facts 
and the petition at the moment doesn't have it, but it's something that we are developing to make the case. So, for example, we can actually say this is where money is going and show that there's a military budget that is forever expanding, especially the US one. On the other hand, there's no money for health care, there's no money for child care, there's no money for, you know, mothers, carers, etc. You know, and you do a comparison and you make your case that way. And in fact, one of the figures came out from the U.S., which was that the Pentagon was the worst uh, environmental, caused yeah. the, the most environmental damage. I think it was about 30%. Yeah. You know, which was just extraordinary figure, which we really have to publicize. And, you know, the amount of money that's going into billionaires, as austerity has struck in many countries, on the other hand, billionaires got got richer and richer. So you can show in a whole set of ways, you know, with prisoners, etc., you know, where the money is going and when it's not going. So, oops, are you all right? Yeah. Did he bang his head on that day? No. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, so we ended up with this, uh, with this uh, demands, okay, which I think everybody has seen the petition, which is caring for others is the foundation of every society, yet this work done mostly by women is devalued and underfunded. We demand that every worker must be paid a living wage, including mothers and other caregivers. And the second demand, this is supposed to say one and two, by the way, not three and four. <coughs> and the second one, national and international budgets redirect financial support and resources to mothers and other caregivers. And that is obviously speaking to what Selma was saying about it being an international petition. And we try to, in the list of points, really represents the different sectors but directly uh, in relation to caregiving work, as, as you call it. So, for example, the fact that women do two-thirds of the world's work, the fact that uh, women grow most of the world's food, we had long discussions about how to integrate that into the petition, mm -hmm. you know, so that subsistence farming and farmers generally would, be, would see themselves, but if you're on the countryside, I mean, caregiving and growing food is really one and the same, you know, you can't separate the two. The issue of violence, the fact that women are trapped because you're, you're dependent, financially dependent on the men and therefore you can't mm -hmm. leave easily. Um, the grandparents, the grandmothers doing the caring work so that the mothers can go out to work and not getting any recognition for that. Breastfeeding, you know, the fact that you have to go to a job soon after birth then obviously you're not going to be able to breastfeed or with difficulty. So all these different issues and we had international meetings with some people in the US who was a whole really network working on the points. <clears throat> and then we also consulted with India and with Peru, and they were very delighted with the petition as well. So, and uh, it has had a very different response than when we did it over a year ago. It was quite astonishing, actually. And that shows you what has happened with the movement for a living wage and the $15, mm -hmm. you know, your $15 campaign as well. Because it's a bit like people are ready for it now, yeah. you know, and a year ago they were a lot more skeptical. As soon as we had this one, the mothers at home, whom we had in mind, who had said, look, we, uh, we support your demand, but we don't want to have to take a position on the military and all that. They had no problem, not only they just, yes, we are endorsing. The Scottish Alliance of Kinship Carers had no problem. We got some... We got a famous trade unionist, Bob Crow, who was the best of the trade unionists, really, who unfortunately has since died, but he immediately signed it as well. We have a very good member of parliament who is very supportive and, uh, you know, has signed it. And also the famous tennis player, Martina Nabratilova, I think you know that name. She signed. She met Selma at an event and... Definitely. And a woman from Women of Colour. Yes, that's right, Sarah, yes. And, that, and uh, she, oh, in fact, she didn't hear you speak. That's right, it was Sarah that she saw. We have a, a, a campaign of people with disabilities who has been very vocal against the cuts. 
in Britain and again they were at first a bit skeptical you know because they felt that some, so somehow if you recognize that carers are doing this work then maybe it means that you as a disabled person you're not as independent as you would like to be they had no problem this time around you know it's like people were in a different place they really mm -hmm. felt that this was the thing to go for mm -hmm. and there is a whole uh, there there is a whole thing going on about a basic income mm -hmm. a basic guaranteed income which I'm sure the $15 campaign you must have come across that maybe mm -hmm. we are definitely but like the Green Party is promoting a, a guaranteed basic mm -hmm. income and various people which obviously we support but on the other hand it doesn't deal with some basic issues yeah. because caring work you know, mm. it has never been recognized, and it's not recognized by a, by a basic income. Mm -hmm. And in a I way, you like feel that. it's a bit like I lived in Italy for a few years mm -hmm. in the in the early 70s, and it, it's a bit like you know the the Italian left used to be into this zero zero work that somehow with technology and this and that we were all going to have zero work, except mm -hmm. that. The women carried on doing all the care and work, you know, yep. the men were definitely working less at some point, but not the women, and you felt there was no recognition for the fact that we were doing this caring work, which we would like them to do as well, but also that that is the work, you don't want zero work in relation to caring work, that is the work that we all want to be doing. Because it is the relationships, you know, Selma always says, you know, they're turning caring work into an industry. <laughs> but the fact is, it is the basic relationships of survival and of society. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have caring, then what the hell are we on about? Mm -hmm. You know, then... So that's what we try to do with the petition. And, uh, yeah, that would, it would be great to have your comments. I think some of you were on the call, but not everyone, so... And I think uh, it does, you know, with the $15 campaign and the basic income and all that, mm -hmm. I feel it's going in the same direction, but at the same time recognizing the work. Mm -hmm. And this is the work that has to be recognized. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of other work that goes on out there that we shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. But this is the work we should be doing, and mm -hmm. we should be doing on the very different conditions aiming at something much better than yeah. what we're aiming for now. Mm -hmm. Can I thank you for that, Nina? Well, I want to add just one thing yeah, to yeah. that. And that is that there are many people now who are speaking, or at least some people who are speaking about a basic income. And how could I be against that? It is just not possible to be against each of us having a basic income so we're never starving. On the other hand, because it leaves out caring, mm -hmm. something happens when you're building a movement for it. Sexism is built in. And racism to some mm -hmm. degree, if you're thinking internationally, because internationally, it's people of color who are most likely to be unwaged without any income, but not in a job. Just working your butt off, trying to survive. And that survival work, which is overwhelmingly done by women, but done by all who have no money, that is a crucial part of the work that must be acknowledged. Mm 